Good morning. How is everybody doing today? <sighs> That's my stretching sound. Can you tell? It's a, I feel like it's a good sound, but, you know, let me know if I need to work on it or something. I was very, very close to just streaming magic the gathering this morning and i was like no we need to finish and then there was a bounty for jurassic world evolution y'all know i like that game it was hard it was hard but i'm here and i want props i want props for playing red dead redemption you know and putting time in on that game so we can beat it sometime i'm really proud of myself for that so yeah just want to just want to point that out thank you neuro thank you So it's a chore. What's a chore? I'm almost done with all of chapter two stuff in RDR2. One more home invasion. Yeah. That's actually pretty impressive. Pretty fucking impressive.
German? I don't, I don't understand what being German has to do with me not understanding your sentence, but okay. Clearly, I'm missing something here. How's everyone's morning going? I have a I have an interesting question to, <laughs> to ask you all today. I don't know if it's a normal question or not, but I feel like oh. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Give me a second here. <laughs> Did you get to the part in Ernie or two yet where Spider-Man died? Oh, my God. The amount of spoilers people attempt to spew. Oh, I fucked that up. Hold up. I fucked that up royally. There's a plus there. I'm the worst. The amount of people who try to spoil that game to me is fucking crazy. I'm just gonna put that out there. It's fucking crazy the amount of people who come in looking to spoil Red Dead Redemption 2. First off, the game is impossible to spoil. You know? Because, like, we've played... This is a prequel. We've played the original game. So we kind of know that everyone in this game is going to die. But that apparently has no bearing whatsoever on anything because people still come in and try to... try to spoil it, which is so confusing to me, especially considering the fact that the game is kind of old now. Like, the game came out, what, close to a month ago? So that part also confuses me, because it's like you're spoiling a game that's been out for a minute now. To me, that's not even really a spoiler anymore. It's definitely strange. I'm a ban all spoilers. Well, I mean, it's a good it's a good strategy to have anyways because obviously those are not the type of people you want around. Even though I don't really care. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, but do you really want a bunch of cuck lords around that desire that level of attention that they're they just walk around spoiling things? Probably not. Um I don't know. It's an interesting situation for sure. People are weird. I'm just happy that when I played a lot of the classics, I was still like so new to streaming. I didn't have that much of an audience, but I would be lying if I said people didn't still come in and try to spoil. It's just my chat moved really slow and I had a really dedicated team of mods. Um... And I never saw them. So people would come in while I was playing like Final Fantasy IX blind or Final Fantasy X and they would just try to spoil everything. I never understood it. I was like, I don't understand why someone would do that. Uh, part of it is literally like stupidity. If we're being honest, part of it is literally like just fucking dumbassery. Like people saying things like, Oh, don't put your good stuff on Edia because, you know, you're going to lose her and then that stuff goes away and you're just kind of sitting there like, so Edia dies. You know, or Edia is going to leave the party and thank, thank you, you're a fucking bitch. Um, and those people, when you ban them, they usually send you a long email. They don't understand how they're banned. And that is just like fucking stupidity. And one thing you'll realize is that people are generally stupid. And I'm not saying that in a on Twitch way. I just mean in general, people are fucking stupid. Like every warning sign you see, it's because someone did that thing. Yeah. 
But then other people literally just have like, they just want attention. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera on. What the fuck happened? My white balance is off too. I'm wearing all black. How is my green screen picking this up? What happened? This is weird. Mm. Okay, I think we're fixed. My white balance seems off too on this camera. What the hell? Oh, it is, it is fucked up, okay. Got set back to auto, which doesn't work for me. All right. Still don't look great. Because, you know, this is my face and my hair is kind of jacked up. But, you know, I, I'm not disappearing into the ether. Shout out to Meta Threads. I saw their booth at TwitchCon and I was like, damn, that's some cute fucking shit. This shit doesn't even look like your normal stupid video game wear. This just looks like cute clothing. And I uh, had a quick chat with the owner. And he gave me this hoodie for free. And I was like, I like it. So, if you're sitting there like, damn, bronze is a cute hoodie. I guess hashtag ad? Looks comfy? It is. It is comfy. I like it. There was like, it's kind of baggy in the back, and I didn't like that at first, but it has grown on me. It has It has grown on me, for sure. My hair looks a little bit jacked up today, but I don't know. I like I like it. I like this look. I have their t-shirt. Yeah, right, Neuro? Meta Threads is like the only brand that doesn't look like video game wear. I want a Bronze Girl Meta Threads collab. I also want a Bronze Girl FKM collab, but I don't think I'm chubby enough to to pull it off. I'm sure Bass would say otherwise, though. I think if we did a Bronze Girl FKM collab, we could probably sell. I don't know. I think probably 200 t-shirts. I need to wax my eyebrows. I was like, what is this? Is this a smudge on my face? No, that's just hair. I'm like, what is this? Is this a smudge? No, it's just hair. It's growing there. You managed to snag an FKM hoodie. I want one in maroon. I'm gonna hit up based. <laughs> Be like, base, can we do can we do a bronze FKM collab? Private limited release. I think probably do it in maroon or black. I don't know what the photo would be. This is the one I got from Meta. Oh, that's fucking cute. I might need to cop that. That looks like a cute little. Yeah, that looks like that looks like something that I would wear. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's some cute shit. My, I'm like looking now. I'm like, oh, okay. I would try to buy a bronze FKM shirt, but that shit sells out faster than 10 cent lobsters. Well, yeah, but that's because base designs are fantastic. If it was like a bronze FKM shirt, it probably wouldn't sell out like that. Because, you know, your average person. The thing with Fat Kid Mafia is like, it's not just popular like, Oh, in the stream, like when I wear my fat kid mafia stuff, people stop me at the airport. I'm not joking. And they're like, nice fat kid mafia hoodie. Like, I'm not I'm not making this up. And you, every convention I go to like, oh, fat kid mafia. Nice. And you're just like, is this a thing? Is this popular on the Internet or on in, in reality? And it is. But I think if it was my face, not as many people would buy it. But I don't know. I'm like how I'm like thinking about it now. I'm like, what would a bronze Fat Kid Mafia shirt look like? It looks like elite futuristic hacker wear. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's cute. I like it. I like a lot of their stuff. Their stuff is cute. Their stuff is kind of cute. Any clothing with weird zipper placements? I can respect that. I can definitely respect that. All right. I have a question for y'all while I do my makeup. Brownie told me that yesterday she got a text from a random person. And the person said, hello, text door neighbor. And when she looked at the number... The number was exactly like hers, except it was one digit off. Okay. I thought, I was like, man, I that person is probably a fucking sociopath. They probably eat people. And Brownie was like, no, they're probably just friendly. I'm like, no, 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 no. Who the fuck is out here texting the number that is sequentially one off from theirs? And saying just those words. Hello, text door neighbor. And I was like, if I was you, I would respond. She was like, what? Really? I was like, yeah. And I'd be like, stop this. What the fuck is wrong with you? And she's like, no. And I was like, what are you talking about? This person probably eats people. Nobody does that, right? Like, no one does that. Text door neighbor. You can't tell me that that's normal. That's not normal. This person's probably like takes photos of women when they are not watching and writes dirty words on them with his poop. I don't think you understand. Like, this is weird. And she was like, maybe he's just really friendly. I was like, that's not friend. What do you mean friendly? Who the hell would do that? It's strange, man. I'm just going to say that. It's fucking strange. And I don't like it. It's fucking strange. It's not that weird. Well, see, this is why I'm at, uh, this is why I'm talking about it on stream because Brownie was like, "Okay, it's just somebody who's a little friendly." And I was like, "Nah, man, that's some serial killer shit." And I told her, I was like, "You know what? I'm going to I'm going to go ask my stream and see and ascertain how many people in chat could see themselves responding and being like, Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hello to you. My text door neighbor. How many of you would strike up a conversation? How many of you would call the cops? Cause this dude's a fucking serial killer. And how many of you would send a text how many of you would send a text saying, hello, text door neighbor? They probably think, hey, Atlas, they probably think they're being perfectly friendly, but it's not cool. And in fact, actually uber creepy. Okay. They probably just posted it for Reddit or something. Really? Is that something that people on Reddit do?
I might respond who dis. Well, they're going to respond back with your text or neighbor. I don't know. Overreact match. Overreact, I believe, is one word. Now I want to look that up. Yeah, overreact is one word. I had to double check. Yep. So, uh, listen here, cock boy. Just, just take that space out and post that again. Then when they explain themselves... I can confirm the depths of their creep and ignore. Separated for effect. Just say separated for illiteracy and be done with it. What is that based? Hold up. Give me a second here. Is it a bronze FKM hoodie? <laughs> it is a bronze FKM hoodie. <laughs> I look so dumb. I love it. Damn. Bot fucked him up. Separated. I was going to let that one go, Gray Man. That looks tasty. Yo, turkey legs are fucking delicious. You sound like a salty bitch. I know, right? I was like, I like how the bot got him out of the paint. It's like funny. And you get bodied by bots. Got bodied by AI. Man. I don't know. That shit, that's some weird shit. He got bodied. You know what, Russ? I don't usually like puns. That one I'll allow. Turkey legs are fucking fire. They are, but they dehydrate the hell out of me. I have one turkey leg, and I feel like I need to drink seven or eight bottles of water. Oh, that's some weird shit. Text door neighbor. It's not so much that responding is weird. Because I can maybe understand that. It's the person who sends it. I don't know. You know, the way like you like to, to, to like the what goes through your head when you decide to send somebody whose number is sequentially one off from yours. Hello, text store neighbor. You know, like that's like. It w I don't even like when people I used to talk to once upon a time on Facebook message me, if I'm being honest. I'm just like, man, why are you back? I finally got rid of you. I recently actually had a conversation about that with a friend. It's like, man, I'm not trying to be somebody's like free emotional counselor and it seems like that's what happens with like old friends like they sit there and the first few conversations are like you know you just reminisce about old times and stuff like that and then you hit a point where they start talking about like their current relationship or and it's like perfect because you're disconnected from their life so they don't ever have to worry about you know, this coming back to bite them or whatever, but there's still a level of familiarity because at one point you used to be friends. For me, that shit's awkward as hell because I'm just like, man, I got enough of my own stuff to deal with. I'm not going to sit here and be your free therapist. Slendy, that's kind of, if that feels like a prank for them to be like, no, this is the right number. That's definitely like a prank of some sort. Because most people would be like, oh, I guess it's a mistake. Not like, no, ma'am. Clearly, you need to learn how to bake a souffle. Clearly. You're telling me you're not a licensed BetterHelp agent? Well, I mean, I technically am, right? Because anybody can be a licensed BetterHelp agent. Ha 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 ha. 
Man, the shit show that is better help. I still can't get over this, this smudgy. It's just hair. I'll have to, yeah. You can be each other's free therapist. Hell no. What's better help? All right, I mean, get into that, Babu. It's like this online counseling service that preys on people who can't afford conventional counseling and therapy. I think what's more fucked up is the content creators who pushed it. Old friends tell Bronze what's going on in their lives and care about Bron what Bronze is up to. Bronze is like, I don't care. Stop being nosy. Sort of. A little bit, Darren. Like, part of me is like, <sighs> maybe I'm a douchebag, you know? But... I <sighs> I feel like a lot of people take that shit for, like, granted. Where it's like, oh, me and Bronze were close once upon a time. I'm having trouble with my current girlfriend or boyfriend. I know, I'll strike up a conversation with her. And then over the course of a couple of days, I'll warm up to her enough to let her know I'm going through a divorce. You know, and it's like, man, I don't get enough value out of this friendship that we stopped talking years ago to want to sit here and try to, like counsel you through this like i understand you're going through a rough time in your life but you're not a part of my circle of friends anymore and once you're not a part of it you're not a part of it like i'll still be warm and friendly to you but i'm not gonna sit here and sort through your emotional baggage that and this is literally why i deleted my facebook that and the other fucking part of it is like people who usually hit me up that i haven't talked to in years it's like right when they get out of a breakup and it's because they're like i wonder why me and jasmine never hooked up and i'm like because you're ugly and i don't like you please never message me again thank you because that's the other half of it that's the fuck that's the other half of it Adam does this hot for teacher stream for relationship advice. Is Adam qualified to give relationship advice? Not trying to be shady, just being honest, because usually you need to be licensed to do relationship counseling. But I'm just I'm in this point of view where I'm like, man, I'm not fucking like it, I get. And the truth is, like, I get that shit a lot of like, oh, hey, I, you know, how's it going? Great. We had like a few classes together in college, right? Yeah. And then it just becomes a situation where it's like, like, oh, why didn't we ever go out? And it's like, because no. Like, why are you hitting me up? Are you hitting me up because you just, like, got out of a relationship? Because I'm not interested. And now I have to awkwardly tell you to fuck off. I mean, I understand where it comes from. You find yourself recently single, you know. You're thinking about your life there's a movie about this um high fidelity high fidelity high fidelity is literally about this phenomenon really like high fidelity is a, a f entire film about this phenomenon that people go through which is sitting there after, you know, being single or like having this moment in their life where they start thinking about, you know, everything that's happened to them or where they are in life. And then they start thinking back on all of their old relationships or stuff like that. And they get to a point where... They start thinking like, why didn't that relationship work out? Or why didn't we go out longer? Or man, if it, 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 the only reason we broke up was because she moved away, you know? And it eventually turned into, it, like the, the movie kind of explores that, if that makes sense. If you haven't seen High Fidelity, watch it. Because this is like an actual human phenomenon, for sure. Of like, oh, hey, I found myself recently single or I feel lonely. 
Let me think back on all of my old could like potential relationships and why they didn't work out. Never in my life has anyone said, how can we never hooked up to it? Must be nice. I mean, that's how I learned what the word smoke show meant. Because this dude told me, like, man, I wish I had asked you out in college. And I was like, oh, ha, ha awkward. And he was like, yeah, because you're a total smoke show. And I'm like. Smoke show. A word to describe someone so hot that you basically see the smoke coming off them. Oh. Oh. That was literally my response. Because I was just like, smoke show. Weird. Neuro, it can't be used lightly. That's one thing I've been assured of by every male in my life. Like, no. A smoke show isn't a girl that's hot. A smoke show isn't a girl that's cute. A smoke show is a girl that's like fucking hot. And I was like, hmm, I got called the smoke show. I thought I, I was pretty excited about that. That's like my new favorite compliment when someone's like, Jasmine, you're like a total smoke show. I'm like, damn, I thought I looked like a boy in makeup. Thank you. Holy shit. Where do people come up with this stuff? I had to look it up. So uh, don't ask me, Babylon, because I didn't fucking know what that meant. I was like, what? I literally Googled it. After I got the, the message, I was like, thank God for Google. If we were talking in person and somebody said that, I would be like, yeah, you too, friend. Why not both? Maybe. Maybe. No, not both. Not both. Cheating on Hobbs. Poor Hobbs. Hobbs doesn't even know. Go ride your motorcycle somewhere else. Jesus fucking Christ. In other news, I really want a pair of Vapor Maxes. They're so cute. And for some reason, I want them in a maroonish or reddish color. Chat, what are your thoughts on these? Those are cute, right? Or should I get these? Because I want a pair of Vapor Maxes. I tried a pair on and they were super cozy and I really want a pair. Also, hi, Uber Ginger. How are you? The second pair? Okay. The se Everyone's the second. All right. All right. So not the first one. Buy whatever is most expensive. I think they're like the same price. Oh, I don't know. Those are a little loud. Like, they're cool. I just don't know what I would wear them with. They're cool. I just, I legitimately don't know what I would wear them with. I do have a pair of red on red on red shoes, though. Okay, these I would wear, but those are $325. Oh, these are the pride shoes. Yeah, no, I, I wanted these. These I wanted, but they also don't have them in my size. These I would buy in a fucking heartbeat. I would look so cute in them. Cute little pride shoes. <sighs> Neuro, when Nike comes out with another Be True collection, we need to get matching pairs of be true shoes i'm just gonna put that out there and we can click our heels together it'll be great
Tutch used to be cool, and then Tutch randomly decided he was going to be all edgy and sarcastic. It doesn't suit him, but I guess that's the route he wants to go. So I've taken to clowning Tutch at every turn. <laughs> we'll pose and ask base if we can be the next FKM models. Oh, these are cute. These are fucking cute. You can't clown Twitch too much, though, because then chat will start to at him and his toaster might overheat. Yeah, might explode, cause another fire. We, we don't need more of those in California. Already enough of that. Thoughts on air prestos. Let me see. Ugh. Ah. Uh, uh. I don't like him. That's just me, though. I don't like him. I don't think I was raised to like shoes. Whatever's cheapest and doesn't hurt my feet is what I was raised to like. I, mean, I didn't grow up liking shoes. It's just like... I don't... It's weird. When it comes to clothing... I always want to be comfortable. And when it comes to shoes, I always want to be comfortable. And a lot of times that is correlated with being frumpy. So for me, shoes became a way to show that I still gave a shit about my appearance. If I were to wear some, <laughs> I don't know, some like Skechers, with jeans and a t-shirt it's and it doesn't i don't know how to describe it it's almost like i've put it's about the optics you know it's about how it looks to other people when i'm out but if i put on some shoes that are cute and go perfectly with the hoodie i'm wearing and the jeans i'm wearing and i get what's called a fit off right then i feel more like i'm still comfortable but i feel confident and I feel like, you know, it's the same reason I shower every time before I go out, right? Because it's just like I want I want to put a my best face forward. And I can't feel that way if I'm wearing ugly shoes or beat up shoes. Like I have shoes I wear every day. They're Chuck Taylors. They're literally just like, you know, the the classic black and white Chuck Taylors. I wear them every day. They are beat to hell. They're like those shoes are nasty. Those are my everyday shoes. That's what I slip on. You know, when I when I go check the mail and stuff like that. Right. But when I'm like going to a convention or going to a movie or hanging out with friends and I don't want to wear high heels, I don't want to wear a dress. I might not even wear makeup if I'm being honest. Right. But I still want to feel like I look good and I feel good and I'm not I didn't walk out in sweatpants. So when I'm in that mood and I put on some some awesome shoes, then I feel like I'm putting it's like the same thing for me as putting on like cologne or because I do that too it's like this it's the way I feel I feel like I don't know how to describe it I feel like the way I look like this is my this is my style because a lot of times in the past I often used to feel like it wasn't my style I was just lazy that's how I used to feel or that I had low self-confidence and as I've gotten older because I've I'm fucking old now as I've gotten older, I kind of realized, like, you know what? I just don't feel comfortable in skirts and in dresses a lot of the time, like, I, especially short skirts. I don't want to spend my entire time either, number one, being cold, or number two, worrying about whether my underwear is showing, worrying about whether my fucking ass is hanging out, all this stuff. I feel so much more comfortable in pants, right? So I often used to think, like, 
oh, I, I, I'm, I'm lazy because I don't put effort in my appearance. I don't, you know, straighten my hair and do my makeup and put on a dress and throw on heels. And really what it is, is that I don't find heels to be comfortable. And the way I was raised, I always think of it as like, I don't know, like a, a combat or a survival situation where I'm like, man, if some shit went down, I would really hate to be in fucking high heels and a dress. You know, that would be a really shitty time for me. So I always think of it that way. And I always try to wear shoes that are somewhat comfortable and are super comfortable typically. And I always try to wear clothing that's super not restrictive. And the reason why is because I want to feel like if I'm in a situation where I need to run or roundhouse kick someone, I can do that. Miranda, it's been a minute. How are you? So when I like think of it from that point of view, I don't once again, it, I don't like that feeling of like, oh, I'm lazy or I didn't put effort into my appearance or it's like I just don't care. So I try to put effort into like, you know, being clean, smelling good and having nice shoes. It's my equivalent of a fancy purse, the way girls wear fancy purses or jewelry. And that's kind of, you know. It's kind of how it is for me. Heels are like foot binding. Men like it, but it sucks for women. Well, I think that the reason like everyone's legs look better in heels, but instead of wearing heels, you could just work on your calves. Do some fucking deadlifts, do some do some fucking calf raises and have nicer legs so that you don't need high heels to look like your legs are toned. Just have toned legs. I feel like we always have this conversation when we talk about shoes, though, because people sit there and they're I, like, I'm not saying this about you, Slendy, but people are usually really judgmental. Like, I remember when I talked about my alien stompers, someone was just like, I can't believe someone would spend over two hundred dollars on shoes. And I'm like. Man, I don't like would you say that to somebody who spent two hundred dollars on an outfit or on you know, like a dress or on height, like on their shoes and a purse. Like for me, this is like what makes my outfit is like having nice shoes and having like, you know, the rest of my fit is like comfortable and it showcases my style and I feel like nice when I wear it. And it's like my way of showing off my style and my my personality and all that stuff without wearing without, you know, compromising on how I look in general it's flex season <laughs> Vicked. I like it based I like it and shoes especially at that price point are gonna last you a long while yeah yeah see yeah exactly Nene exactly so it's just it's weird because there's like it's there seems to be like a lot of, like pe it seems like people are understanding when a girl spends like two hundred three hundred dollars probably more than that let's be honest on a purse and for me I don't even carry a purse so it's like well to me this is like my my accessory this is like my purse I don't have that many pairs either and most of my pairs don't cost they're they're all in the one hundred and twenty to two hundred and twenty dollar range. The alien stompers are the only ones that were like over 300, but the, that came with two pairs of shoes. So they weren't that expensive, if that makes sense. Because um, those who have seen it, like I have the, the, Reebok, the Reebok set and it comes with two pairs of shoes. One is the alien queens that are like made out of this patent leather and they look like really glossy and shiny. And the second pair is the actual like... Uh, the alien loaders and they look like the loaders from from the the second movie the most expensive pair of shoes i paid for were 220 dollars. the most expensive pair in value that i own are 1200 fair enough fair enough yeah it's kind of like me with my comics like the most money i've ever spent on a comic is 110 dollars. the most my comic is valued at is 450 but I've never spent that much on a comic.
You used to wear boots. Boots are expensive, but they're awesome. Like work boots. Those will last you a long time, though, and they're like waterproof and everything. It's crazy discovering that there's a whole culture around like buying and selling shoes. I love it. Thoughts on these? Let me see. Where'd it go? Oh, those are cute. Those are cute. I actually have these, this, this shoe in uh, blue on blue on blue. And by blue on blue on blue, I mean like the sole is blue. Have you seen those? I don't wear them because I don't have, I don't know what to, I don't know what to wear them with. I think this color I would probably end up wearing more. But these, I have this exact shoe, the exact same shoe in just like all blue. They're cute though. They're fucking cute. I was so dis or uh, not not me. Obviously, I wasn't disappointed. Balvin was so disappointed when I posted the photo on Twitter because he was just like, "I thought you were Pyru." It's winter boot season soon. Oh yeah, because you're up in Canada, aren't you, Rajiel? Seattle I've, every year hits this season that's like UGG season. Man, it's a dark time. I don't like UGGs. I don't like UGGs, okay? Just like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out and say this. Now, I'm probably going to sound like a dick, but I'm just going to say it anyway. If you come out of the house in pajama pants, I I don't think we could hang out. I'm just being honest. I, just, I don't think we could. I don't like it. I'm not going to say sweatpants because some there's like some high quality like there's some sweatpants that are fashionable. That's a thing now. But like I'm talking about like actual pajama pants. If you go out in pajama pants and Uggs with your hair up in a bun and that to you is okay, like, I don't know about that. Not even to just run to the store. Hell no. I'm not running to the store in my pajama pants. That's like, jo okay, joggers. I've been delving into joggers and I look cute in them. And I did not realize that was a thing. I always thought I was going to look kind of dykey in them. I, apparently, I look cute in joggers, so that's something I need to do more often. I, I, I didn't think that was in, within my range. But So I'm not counting joggers. I'm talking about like actual pajama pants. Like, oh, I, they have gingerbreads on them, and I'm going to wear that tucked into my Uggs with the sweatshirt. Nah, man, seriously. If you are an adult and you are doing that shit... I don't even like when high schoolers do it. Like, Spiegel, you're right. That is some high school shit. For some reason, I see adults do it, too. I don't like it. I really don't like it. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't understand why, like, you know, it, to me, it's almost like people seeing you in your underwear. Is that weird? Like, it's clothing that... It's, like, clingy and awkward and... I just don't understand why you would wear it out because that's not what it's meant for. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like Uggs in general. There's also been this new trend I've seen around my town that's people that wear shirts that are big and baggy but then they wear tiny shorts so it's almost like they're not wearing pants i'm just like what kind of style is that that's dumb <sighs> but i also am very firmly in the camp of tights are not pants i feel like i feel like some people didn't get that education when they were growing up of like hi hello 
Uh, tights are not pants. So when you wear tights, you need to wear something with them that covers your camel toe. You can't just wear a t-shirt and tights because tights are very much not pants. You can wear a tunic and tights. You can wear a t-shirt and then shorts and then tights. But you can't just wear a t-shirt and tights because believe it or not, tights are not pants. Thank you for coming to my seminar. Extolling the virtues of burkas. Exactly, Friedolf. Exactly. Uggs make me go ugh because they're ugly. I think I read this article. I don't know if it's true or not. That apparently Uggs started out as a shoe for men in Australia to wear when they went surfing. Like, because you could hop off the surfboard and put these shoes on while you walked on the beach or whatever. That is what I have heard. I do not know if that is true. But I remember reading this article that was like, oh, Ugg started out as a shoe that was for, you know, dudes that went surfing. If you had to choose one to delete, would it be Uggs or Crocs? Uggs. Uggs. In a heartbeat. In a fucking heartbeat. Here's the difference. When someone wears Crocs, they know that they're wearing Crocs. You know? Like, they're aware of the shoe choice that they made. But when someone wears Uggs, they're, like, somehow brainwashed into thinking that they're fashionable. And there's just more hideous variations on the UG, which is why it has to go. Okay? For example, let me give you an example. You have Uggs, but then you have every sort of thing under the sun to just make them even more fucking ugly. Like, Crocs are a utility shoe. Okay? You're not going to find sequin-covered Crocs, but you know what you will find? You will find sequin-covered Uggs. You will find all manner of Ugg boot. Because people have deluded themselves into thinking that throwing sequins and fur on it is the key. You know? I'm not even making this shit up. Right now. Look, you can buy these things for $189. Because clearly that's what you need. And if you're like, who the hell wears those? People wear them. People fucking wear them. Because you know what's better than a fucking hideous ass, ugly ass boot? One with fucking sequins all over it? This is why Uggs have to go. Right here. This photo is why Uggs need to fucking go. They've got, they're not welcome on this planet anymore. Okay? Because every time my eyeballs see this shit, I feel like I need to sue for emotional damages. Because this is, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe that. Like, at least people who wear Crocs know that they're wearing Crocs, you know? They're not going to try to dress those Crocs up. People that wear Uggs, they don't think they're wearing Uggs. They think they're wearing $180 boots. So it's like, oh, I'll just wear this with some tights and my Lululemon hoodie. And I'll go to the bar. No. These are like slippers. Why are you wearing these out? And why are they covered in sequins? Uggs gotta go. They're at the Balenciaga Croc collaboration. I think Balenciaga was just trying to make a statement. I'm just gonna say that. 
Also, a lot of high fashion shit is trash. Let's be honest here. But did y'all see the Vogue India spread I retweeted? Hold up. Did y'all see the fucking Vogue India spread I retweeted? Fucking Vogue India, man. I'm thinking I might need to start. I, I mean, I always liked Indian couture, but now I'm like. Like Vogue India. Hello. Hi. Hello. Would you like to work with an American influencer? Because. Excuse me. That's me and Brownie right there. <laughs> this this is me and Brownie chilling in my apartment on a casual Sunday afternoon after brunch. I don't know if you knew this. This is actually a photo taken of us in the wild. Just kidding. My legs would never be that. I don't think I don't think my arms will ever be that tiny little on my legs, but that's fire. I love I love this one. This one is beautiful. Vogue India is killing it. Like. So good. This last one might be the best. That looks so cozy. Yeah, no. Vogue India knows what's up. I'm very proud that those are my people right now. Where you feel that like welling in your in your eye of a tear because you're just so proud you're like oh, good job <laughs> oh good job <gasps> that's how i feel mm-mm-mm There's like, I mean, I'm not, okay, I will not lie. I've talked about it on stream before, but uh, India Fashion Week, Lakme India, India Fashion Week is like my favorite week of the year by far. Um, but I never, I usually don't really talk about it. And now like Amazon is organizing it so amazon india fashion week was like fucking fire this year it happens in summer like i'll just show i'll show you one of the things that i like fucking died and was like okay well i need to go shopping in india now this this was my favorite piece from amazon india fashion week 2018 ready <sighs> yes yes I think I think I'm gonna walk into the next TwitchCon with that on. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I'm just gonna walk into like fucking TwitchCon wearing that and just, you know. <laughs> Cause that's to me that's fire. I love it. That was my favorite piece. I love the lavender. I even like her goggles. Maybe not with that outfit, but I even like I even like the goggles a little bit. It was it was good. It was good. This is one of my favorite designers. His name is JJ Valaya. And uh, he mostly does like Indian fashion, but like he doesn't he doesn't make gowns. He only makes like Indian clothes. So. Yeah. But I mean, like it's it's his stuff is fire. Like, obviously, this is too much. I obviously couldn't wear. I, there's probably no time in America I could wear any of these things 
even though the one on the far right speaks to me on a spiritual level. Like, you know, this, this is like Indian wedding wear. And by that, I mean like wedding guest wear. Is it too much? I'd wear that middle outfit. I mean, come on, Raj. It's a little bit much. A little bit much. But like, you know, absolutely beautiful. I, I love I love my country's fabrics and embroideries and prints. I think we have the most beautiful clothes in the world. And the best food in the world. Just wear it to my wedding. I probably will, Nero. I'm not lying about that. Like, I will most likely come to your wedding in, like, Indian formal wear because I don't know anything about American formal wear. <laughs> I never, like, American formal wear perplexes me. I just, I never know. Like, it, it, what's what's too simple? What's too much? It's, it's, it perplexes, it just perplexes me. So I feel so much more comfortable wearing, like, a lenga or a sari because at least then I, like, I have, like, some kind of barometer of what's appropriate and, not, and what's not appropriate. So most likely just going to, you know, come to your wedding in something like that. So, yeah. But, you know, there's those basic Beckys that would totally dress it up like Sailor Ma Oh, wait. <laughs> Pull up to your local McDonald's like royalty and buy something on the dollar menu. <laughs> oh, gosh darn it. Y'all are great. I'm just going to say that. Y'all are magical. Good thing is two gay guys getting married so they'd both be happy you'd kill it instead of a bridezilla getting mad at you. True, true, true. It's weird. A lot of people are worried about someone else taking the shine at their wedding, but it's like you're the bride. Like no one can take your shine. But I like I also come from a country where like Indian weddings, everyone is extra as fuck. Like you saw those clothes. Like everyone is dressed to the nines, shiny as fucking shit. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Usually, I guess, like, I think the other thing is in India, the bride always wears, well, depending on whether you're Muslim or not, always wears red. Always. If you're Muslim, green. But it's like a really bright green. So it's one of those things that you always know who the bride is. But it's also like the focus is on the bride. So, yeah, on the on the bride and the groom. You know what I mean? It's weird. We I think we just have a different we don't have this attitude of like, it's your special day. Like Indian weddings, it's a family event. That's always the vibe I've gotten from it. Like I remember when my sister got married and it was very much this vibe of like, you know, it was she enjoyed her wedding the least, if I'm being honest. Because she was so focused on saying hello to everyone, talking to everyone. She didn't even get to enjoy her wedding food spread. Because it's like your wedding is for other people to enjoy, if that makes sense. It's like a family event. It's about family. Um, it's not about you. Like no one's going to say, oh, it's your wedding. It's your special day. No, it's your wedding. Congratulations to your father and your mother and your grandma. Like that, I'm not joking. Like it, like people come up to your your parents when you get married and they're like, congratulations. And and that is like, it's celebratory like on a family level. Like you, you do not mean shit. You are nobody. So no one's ever going to say, oh, it's your bride. This is your special day. No, it's not your special day. This is your dad's special day because you're now you're somebody else's burden. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly what Raja said. Indian weddings are about the guests. Who cares about the couple getting married? They're throwing a party for the guests. Yes, it's your family special day. Exactly, exactly. It's it's. Is it because of arranged marriages? No. Even even when the marriage isn't arranged, it's just a cultural thing. Weddings aren't for the people that put them together. Weddings are for the guests that come and celebrate. So it's more important that all your guests get fed, that you take photos with all of them, you shake all their hands. Weddings aren't for the people getting married. It, that it's it's a cultural thing. Russ, thanks for the cheer. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. 
that's just like coming from a Punjabi family. It was very strange when I went to my first American wedding and there was a cash bar. So I like I like walk up there and order a drink and they're like, OK, four dollars or five dollars, or whatever. And I was like, I, my brain almost broke because in <laughs> that's not what happens. <laughs> Indian weddings, everything is free, and there's bottomless. If it's a Punjabi wedding, bottomless alcohol. Like, so it's one of those things that it's like to have to charge cash. It's like weird. So she, I was offended because they were like, "Oh, five dollars," and I was like, "I didn't bring money. It's a wedding." <laughs> Like, I, I didn't bring money. <laughs> like, it's a wedding. I'm not bringing money. <laughs> who doesn't have an open bar at a wedding? You would be surprised. There's a lot of people who don't have open bars at a wedding. But to me, if you if you spend like $3,000, $2,000 on your dress and you don't have an open bar, your priorities are fucked up. Like, you, nah. Nah. People are going to people are going to talk about your reception. They're not going to talk about your dress, you know. Don't get me started on this though. I just I feel like I miss I miss like our parents and our grandparents age. Cuz I've been to some weddings like with my friends and peers and stuff and their priorities are so fucked up. Like it's all about the venue and it's all about the dress and it's all about taking these photos for Instagram and making sure that, you know, the bridesmaids and the grooms have a photo shoot before the venue. But like our parents got married in backyards and had the fucking dopest parties. You know what I mean? Like when I see like, when I see like cute photos of like, like my friends, grandparents and stuff in their homes. And it's like a backyard wedding that just looks like a dope ass party. I'm like, man, that's we need to get back to that. And I understand why weddings have been commodified and sold. Right. We're selling people on a dream, on an illusion. But. If you're spending thousands of dollars on the venue. Nah, man. Some of the best weddings I went to were like the summer barbecue weddings. Where there was like, like once again, open bar, barbecue. Filipinos know how to get married too. Filipino weddings, y'all, y'all spread is amazing. But then again, I could probably eat my weight in lumpia. <laughs> That's where 60% of my budget is going to. It's the party. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, by the way. So... I'm going to Cape Town next year to go to Neuro's wedding. I'm going to have a fun time traveling with my Indian outfit, but I'm going to look beautiful. Writing it down now, Mary Filipino or Indian. <laughs> Nene, I don't know what that is. Like, oh, the baseball park? Can you get married at a baseball park? Damn, Nene's wedding's gonna be like TwitchCon. Yeah, Punjabis are extra as fuck. Eighty percent Josh's guests. That's okay. I'll be sitting on your side of the of the reception hall. No, like you know what I mean. I'll I'll be there. I'll be there rep in neuro. I'm gonna find a way to help bump your numbers. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I'll be there. I'll be there to help. I think Brownie will be there, will be there too, most likely. So. I need the new kingdom to drop now. It definitely looks good. I won't dispute that. It does look good. It looks dope. I just realized I only have like 45 minutes until I have to go do some fall cycle. So I think I'm just going to switch to talk shows. Because I should have started in that, and I didn't. But I also didn't anticipate to, like, talk this long. So let's get out of this category before shit gets awkward, because it's about to. <laughs> Vicken? <laughs> Is there a lit side of the wedding party? Maybe. Hey, Brent, how's it going? Suggestion for next stream, open bar. I haven't drank on stream in a minute. I haven't drank on stream in a minute. I feel like it's like this weird cliche now. Because I've seen like streamers get drunk on stream and it's like never a good look. It's always a bad look. And after seeing that, seeing like the kind of, I'm like, oh, do I really want to look like those people? I kind of just stopped. Bronze will get toasted and tell you all how much she loves you. I'm the best drunk. I'm I'm the best drunk. I never say that, but I am. I I'd be lying if I said otherwise. Like I'm I'm super like nice and like yeah. Yeah. Val is the same way. Turns into a big old mushy session of being me being like, I love you, Val. Val being like, I love you too. We're like sisters. <laughs> We're like sisters. Last time Braun drank on stream, she cried and told me and Kara how much she loves us. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. All nice. You were yelling at me. That's because you frustrate the hell out of me, Miranda. Also, I never got drunk around you. And wait, in real life or on stream? On stream, I've probably gotten drunk around you. In real life, I think I only had like one Manhattan. It wasn't even post-con depression. It was post-Val Bronze Misty Brownie depression. <laughs> Not going to lie. Like, based, it almost looks like a pimp because he's just surrounded by, like, brown women when he goes out. First TwitchCon? I feel like I only had, like, two Manhattans. I love Miranda, but Miranda drives me crazy. I'm just going to say that. I love Miranda, but Miranda, like, legitimately drives me nutty. P there's there's always somebody like that though that happened this time too that happened this time too it was one of val's friends she's a nice girl don't get me wrong but she saw my face she saw my face when it was like oh she because she showed up to one of the parties without her id and i was just like like she saw it in my face she literally saw it in my face like how disappointed i was where I was like, why would you leave the house without your ID? Like, that to me is like, that to me is like, you will see, like, some, like, yeah. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I almost called you Poppy, and then I stopped, because I was like, that's weird. <laughs> hey, how is it? How's it going? I'm out for lunch. Try not to spill any tea while I'm gone, chat. I'm going to spill all the tea. Spill all the fucking tea. Man. Yeah, no, I don't. When people, like, have that lack of, like, common sense or self-preservation, I get, like, super weird. I get weird, man. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. Because it's one of those things that I just, like, my mom always told me you never leave the house without your ID and like some form of payment. And when I see people leave the house without like their ID 
and a debit card or just like the basics. All I can think of is like, what what do you do if the like you don't have any rights without your identification? It couldn't be me. But apparently that's the thing. Tons of people leave the house without their ID. Shouldn't do that. That's bad. Not just to get into bars and stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, that's where we got jammed up. But it, it, not just for that. You should just always have your ID on you. And why if you get arrested if you don't have your ID? Right? Hey, Fenring. Or just like... I don't know. Yeah, same, Uber. Same. I always have my ID and I always have like... Like a, a form of payment. I bring my driver's license, government ID everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Miranda did that too. Miranda left like the bar or left the left the hotel room without his ID. And this happened this last TwitchCon too. So now I have like zero fucking like patience for it. Cause at this point it's happened at every TwitchCon that everybody gets up together to go somewhere and there's always one person in the group that doesn't have their ID. <sighs> that, man, that's happened to me every TwitchCon. And I'm just like, motherfucker, what if you get shot or knocked out or you end up in the hospital or you get arrested or, like, anything? You should always have your ID. So people ask me, like, oh, what do I need to bring? I don't even, I don't even count your ID in that because I'm just like, well, you know... But Miranda, like, what about all the other situations I just outlined of, like, all the other times you'll, you might need an ID? What if there's a, like, what if people stampede and people get trampled and they need to identify who you are so that they can contact people or so that people can find you when you're in the hospital? It, I don't know. You should just always have your ID on you. If you need to be told to bring your ID, stop it. <laughs> I had Thug Bronze. I mean, Thug Bronze. Thug Bronze. Thug, Bron Thug Bronze does not exist. Look at me. What part of me looks like I would be a G? No part. I'm one of those people that I'm like, yes, I pay my taxes early and full. I'm always 10 minutes on, on time to everything and... You know, I'm the opposite. TwitchCon has a ton of people who haven't left the house since last TwitchCon. You expect them folks to be on their shit? That hoodie makes you look pretty gangster, not gonna lie. This is the one you helped me get for free. This is the one I got the hookup on. It's cute. I like it. It's like the perfect indoor hoodie because it's like it's not thick, if that makes sense. Thick. It's, like, warm enough to be, like, because it's cold up here right now. But it's also, like, it's, like, an indoor hoodie. I like it. I like it. I like the hood on it. It's cute. Does it? Yeah, no. I was going to say, I don't think it fits over my headphones, but it says. It's cute. I like it. Where's the zipper? This one doesn't have one. Neuros has one. I'm trying to get that Fat Kid Mafia Bronze Girl mashup. See, look, Thug Bronze appears. I can see it. What? What would Thug Bronze do? I'm not gonna throw hands. I don't want to go to jail. Thug Bronze would most likely like apologize. <laughs> that's that's a lie. That's that's actually a lie. It's just that I tell people. <laughs> Based nose, based nose. I'm it's probably closer to the opposite of that. 
pull the fire alarm and slap somebody. <laughs> or tell tell Vicky to pull the fire alarm while I slap somebody. <laughs> Do we have to play the video? Do y'all remember that old video um, that Romy made of me? Where's it at? I can't find it. There was like a great video for this. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's kind of like old school bronze. So, oh, I found it. I found it. This clip is over three years old. It's over three years old, but it's it's kind of great. Y'all ready? All right, let's see. <laughs> Look at that lighting. <laughs> no wonder people are like, is she black or white? Like, because my, my camera definitely looks like it is black and white. This is what Bass fondly refers to as chubby bronze. Because Bass is mean. Or maybe that's a compliment. I don't know. Bass was my friend when I was ugly. So I guess, yeah. Let's see. Wish there was more time. Do you have a fucking problem? Holy shit! That's my problem. Yeah. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Fucking stupid. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> My fucking face. <laughs> Mensa card holder bronze. Graduated high school valedictorian. Do 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 do. So stupid, so fucking stupid. Can that be the new sub alert? Yes, yes, I'll work on it. I'll set it up for tomorrow. Tier three subs only. <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> so bad. So fucking bad. Oh my God. This is like, have you ever seen the clip that Romy made of like... <laughs> My first trip to the strip club. Did you guys ever, did you ever see this? Okay, it's not that funny until you see the end part. All right, look, look at this. Look at this. The booty. Let's do it. You don't say no to the booty. You don't say nervous. no to the booty. Watch this. She's naked. <laughs> oh my god. I bet you're hard. Look, <laughs> my face is on the titties. <laughs> <laughs> Romy used to make all this shit and I used to think it was the funniest shit ever. And and to people who are like, why are you surprised she's naked? Because before then, when I played games like in the strip clubs, they'd always be wearing bikinis. And then I played GTA 5 like one time on stream and it was like, it ended up turning into hours of YouTube content. And it it was like, when she came out topless and I was streaming, I remember my first thought being like, well, looks like we're getting banned. And then when Romy edited it and put my face on the nipples, that shit was like, that's just fantastic. Is because he put that face on there that like, 
Oh, I'm getting banned. This is a perfect moment. This is perfect. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Vicken, <Vicky and> stop. <laughs> <laughs> me and Lu me and Waluigi, man. Oh my god! <laughs> What's funny is Waluigi is my favorite Mario Kart character. Yeah, so it's like that's that's my cart. <laughs> <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wally is my favorite Mario Kart character. Are we twins? Are we are we twins? Man. There's some wholesome moments on here. Some wholesome moments on here. Just like like when this this one dude on YouTube interviewed me in my Miss Marvel costume, that was kind of wholesome as well. Yeah, yeah. My posture isn't great because I didn't used to work out back then, but the costume was great. Yeah, that was another wholesome moment. I have some wholesome videos on my YouTube. A lot of them are terrible, if I'm being totally honest. But some of them are wholesome. You guys are going to have a slumber party and braid each other's hair and then play Mario Kart and talk shit to each other? Maybe. Maybe some Overcooked will be involved as well. Because, yeah. Our hair isn't long enough to braid. We'll take turns styling each other's swoop with hairspray. Okay. All right. So it is a 10 a.m. today, sweet. There's no Far Verona today. Oh, I should probably announce that. So even though I have to leave in like 30 minutes to go do this D&D 5th edition campaign over on Jesse Cox's channel, there's no Far Verona today. So after I'm done with that RPG, I'm going to stream again. <clears throat> so come through i guess i'm gonna try to put some hours in on red dead redemption get some stuff done with that game i really want to play hitman too that's why and i really want to play throne breaker so i'm not jumping on the fallout 76 train i'm sorry i love fallout but it's just i don't know i don't know how to describe it like i feel like the only reason people are jumping on it is because it's the new hype thing and I don't think it's because people are. At, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until the till the the jury's in on whether or not that game is worth um, playing or wasting time with. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and do it. I don't. I don't do that though. I don't jump on every new release. Um, I feel like I need to have some degree of fucking integrity with my content and stuff like that. And so. Um, I'm not going to be playing this game that literally everyone and their mom is playing. I am a big Fallout fan. Those of you who know me know that at this juncture, I've played, not beaten, I haven't beaten number two, but I've I've played every single Fallout. And I've played two, I just haven't beaten it. So, 
I I am. This is a game you'll probably see me play in the future, just not in its current state. You know, um, because I've I've seen way too much on it. That's like uh, apparently you can get your fucking your you can get docs playing that game and stuff like that. So I'm not trying to deal with all that, and I'm not trying to deal with all the voice actors and the stupid shit that's going on in that game right now. Um, so I just it's I don't know. It's just not for me. But that being said, it is in the future. Don't be like, oh, well, you said you were never going to play this. You're never playing it. I'm not saying I'm never going to play it. I'm just not playing it right now. Um, and I I just, I, I am interested. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't interested because I'm a big fan of that universe. Um, but I just don't think that this is how I, this isn't the intro I want to it. So I'm not going to be playing it out of the gate. Um, yeah. People are asking me if I'm going to play Spyro. It's not really in my wheelhouse. So I probably won't be playing Spyro. If you're curious about what I will be playing this month, um, I'm thinking of a Darksiders 2 playthrough because I really love Darksiders 1 and I'm interested in Darksiders 3. Um, Hitman 2. Hitman 2 looks like something that's like up my alley. Thronebreaker looks fun. So those are some of the options, some of the things that I've been looking at. Um, yeah. Off stream, I've been playing some Warframe. I've, I've, I just unlocked Jupiter, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, those are, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just very... We had such a good month last month. Like, I feel like last month was some of was probably the greatest horror month we've had. Um, Soma was fire. A lot of those games were fire that we played this month. Uh, last year's was pretty awesome too. Last year we had greats like Alan Wake and Alien Isolation, but um, this year was was probably the best quality wise, just in terms of like. It was good. Actually, last year wasn't Alan Wake. Last year was one of the worst ones. The year before that was Alan Wake. Last year was um, Resident Evil 4, which was like 10 out of 10. But then there was uh, The Evil Within, which, in my opinion, was like a downgrade from Resident Evil 4. Whereas this year, Resident Evil 1 was like amazing. Soma was amazing. The Outlast streams with Brownie were fucking hilarious. Um, I need to highlight those. There's some good shit there, so. I need to hire somebody to play the spy missions in Warframe for me. All the rest is great, yeah? Bye, Morphinius. The Walking Dead. I actually like Overkill's The Walking Dead. Not gonna lie, kind of went into that went into that thinking it wasn't going to be great. Ended up coming out of it feeling like it was the closest approximation of an actual zombie game. Yeah. I haven't played another zombie game that's like quite like that one because it's very much a, a a maximizing your resources not making any fucking noise at all unless it's an emergency and finding the most efficient path through as opposed to just like the one thing that weirds me out is like what happens when you know what those paths are Like, what happens when you learn the route? The maps aren't procedurally generated. So what happens when you know the route, you know the way through? Does the game become easy? Does the game become trivial? These are things I don't know, because we only played for a few hours. And... It's hard to tell, honestly. It's really hard to tell whether... Yeah. Like I'm like lost in thought now. I imagine it'd still be difficult as there is some human elements to the game. 
Oh, can is there PvP? It just doesn't seem like it's randomized. It's kind of the problem. It follows the payday model when you're up to the difficult certain paths become inaccessible, you have to find alternatives. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I mean, if there's PvP, that changes everything. But if it there isn't, then... Because the difference between a game like, say, Warhammer Vermintide and Overkill's The Walking Dead is that in Vermintide even though the maps are not procedurally generated, the enemy spawns are, so you never know quite what you're getting into. And second off, there's modifiers. So once you get to the part of the game where you've got it down to a science, you can start picking up those special modifiers where there are no health drops or where there's, you know, you slowly lose health over the course of the game. Like, you can do that type of stuff. And when you do that, then it adds, like, you have to strategize around that a little bit. Um, with Overkill's The Walking Dead, they don't really have any of those modifiers yet. So, but I could see them potentially adding stuff like that just to add replay value. Because Warhammer Vermintide has great replay value. Vermintide, in my opinion, is one of the most slept on games, especially with Twitch integration. I think it's one of the most slept on games on Twitch. It kind of like to me is a is proof that like Twitch is kind of fucking like weird with stuff like that. It's very much like, like I said, a self-perpetuating cycle of like, well, everyone's playing this, so I'm going to play it and no one's playing this. So no one's going to play it. And it's like, well, people don't even know to look for certain games unless other people play them. And you have this weird rush where every and it, and at the end of the day like it's it's honestly the viewers who lose because if you go through your follow list right now and everyone's playing Fallout 76 and you don't want to watch that game you end up in a situation where i know i know half of my fucking list is playing that if i'm being totally fucking honest right now you end up in the situation where you're the one who loses i guess Like as a consumer? Mm. But in general, if you have anyone in mind you want to coordinate a four-man squad, let me know. Yeah, I'll have to see. I don't know who would be down to play. That's the situation I'm in right now. That's like the constant situation on Twitch. Everyone plays the same four games. And then, you know, they it, it's it sucks. It really fucking sucks. I I I didn't want to pass that Bread Dead Redemption. I don't do like all the new releases. I'm very picky about which ones I do, and I just I really didn't want to pass up Bread Dead Redemption because I really liked the first one. And it's some of the most fun I've had on stream. So I don't regret I don't regret streaming it at all. But um like, I'd be lying if I said anytime I do do new releases, it's, like, the only time the channel does well. Which sucks, because I think there's some great indie and side content that's, like, fucking amazing. But it's, it once again, it's a self-perpetuating cycle. I understand why. It's because when you play games that aren't in popular directories, the work all becomes on the part of the consumer to find that. Yeah. Like all of the work falls on the consumer to then seek out and find this content that they like. And most people, and so what that translates into is lower view counts and most people don't want to deal with that. So they'll just play what's popular. Good night, Carrie. Take care.
So I don't know. This kind of this kind of like my weird half answer on that. Like now I'm like lost in thought. Like how would one fix that problem? But like let's say I want to play a game like Okami and there's people that enjoy the game Okami. The onus would be on them to add that to their follow list and then actually, you know, see who's playing it as opposed to like when you look at the top streams on Twitch, especially in terms of view counts and stuff, it's all going to be what's popular right now. So those stu- that stuff is easier to find because it's there in front of your face. And if you're looking... And then even then, okay, let's say you are look, you really enjoy watching Suikoden. So you follow Suikoden as a game and someone goes live with Suikoden and their stream isn't great or you don't like it or you constantly find like these people in your game's you follow lists that you're not worth that they, that you don't like or you don't enjoy and they're not worth watching. So you kind of just stop paying attention to that tab. And then when you do see a streamer in there, that's great. You do click on it. Right. And then you go to, I'll, I'll describe this from a variety caster point of view because your average person isn't seeking out games like like older games, the like games like resident evil one on Twitch. Right. What you attract is a very dedicated demographic. You don't attract people that are like, oh, hey, I enjoy Resident Evil. This stream looks interesting. I'll check it out. You attract the, I've played Resident Evil 782 times. You just missed an item underneath the table there. Why'd you time me out? I was just helping. She missed an item underneath the table. What build are you running? Have you 100%ed this yet? Did you know that Wesker, if you actually slap Wesker on the ass in the first 30 seconds, you unlock Wesker's special gun, which is shaped like his penis and shoots a thousand bullets a second? You didn't know that? You should do that. That's what you attract. So when when you, the people that do have like, I guess like the gumption or whatever to seek out those streams, they are only there for the game. They are really they're legitimately only there for Resident Evil 1. So then there's very few, maybe like 1 to 10% that will stick around and be like, "You know what? I came for Resident Evil, but I actually like Bronze's personality, so I'll stay for Bronze." What ends up happening is they all leave like and they just come back and say, "So, are you going to play Resident Evil 2? Are you finished with Resident Evil 1? Are you going to play it again?" Like you your speedrun number was, you know, like you took 8 hours to beat it. You're not going to try to run that and get that time down and they leave because they are they are only there for resident evil one you don't attract normal people that are like oh i enjoy resident evil i also enjoy swoopy hair and fun conversation this is a stream for me you only attract like the people that once again because it takes effort to seek this game out the super hardcore fans and we deal with that constantly and anytime i stream a retro game the chat is filled with people who are not interested in in any kind of of the content i create all they care about is resident evil and all they care about is backseating and you end up banning most of those people anyway and you reach the situation where you're like man i am sitting here at you know x and x view count streaming this game banning people consistently right when i could be streaming fallout 76 for double this view count and not deal with all these issues So what ends up happening is you water down your content to fit that cookie cutter. But then everyone sits there and says, man, I really wish people didn't play the same four games on Twitch. And so many people will try to lecture me and be like, well, some people watch for the game and some people watch for the streamer. I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is it's hard to attract the type of people where both of those, that Venn diagram, where that Venn diagram overlaps, you know? There, that little that little middle space where these two circles overlap is really hard to attract. And the reason why is because they don't have that weird fanboyism of I'm going to follow the Resident Evil directory and then every single time I go on my following page to see who I'm going to watch today, I'm going to check that directory and da-da-da-da. Like, you, you don't... It's really hard uh, to kind of... So you mostly rely on, you know word of mouth and hosts for people people to see you go live and they happen to see you go live with the game that they like it's <clears throat> it's a weird cycle it's a weird i'm just gonna say that it's a weird cycle and the only way to fix it would be to like kind of restructure how different how you like the main page 
And I don't think that that's going to happen. So I never check directories. I rely on hosts. Right. For someone like me who doesn't network, that's like, it's hard. It's difficult. I should probably network more. I just don't like networking in this industry. It's not fun. You know, I was talking to it last night. I was talking to Wall Stormer in DC about it last night and they kind of agreed where it's like, oh, like Wall, Wall Stormer was saying how he went to the TwitchCon party and his friend that he was with, she said that someone asked her like within like 10 minutes of being at the party, just instinctually like, oh, how many followers do you have? Like the, that's what I mean. Like networking with people is never fun. Um, because it's always like this like awkward, like how do I demonstrate my value to you? And to me, it's like, maybe I'm self absorbed or something, but I'm like, nah, man, like if you watch my RPGs or if you've seen my content, like I think I have something really unique and something really awesome. And just because you have more viewers doesn't mean that your content is better than mine. It just means that our journeys on Twitch have been different. So I'm not going to sit here and and like, you know, kiss your ass or try to prove my value to you because I think I have value inherent inherently. And most people misconstrue that as being stuck up or as, you know, like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it becomes a situation where like networking within the industry, I'm great with networking with other streamers is what I, I'm not great with because I'm not, I'm not with the bullshit at all. So if somebody comes at me weird or says something condescending, I just, I don't put up with it for a host. I'm not going to put up with it for a host. I'm not going to do it. Your host isn't worth that much to me. And I do not recommend carrying on that way to those of you who are like, oh, I'm thinking of starting out with streaming or I, I want to stream. I don't recommend doing what I do. Because <laughs> it's it's if you if you enter this industry and you get that reputation, hey Shin, how's it going? That I kind of have where it's like, nah, I'm not kissing anybody's ass for a host. People very quickly will realize like you're antisocial or whatever, and then people don't reach out to you as much, and that can be a bad thing. So it's almost better to just like do the whole the whole charade. But I just I don't do it. I mean, think about it. How often do we raid people? How often do we do we host people? How often, If I go offline and there's not somebody that I don't know streaming or that I'm like, oh, this stream looks cool or this, this looks dope and I don't host them or, yeah, I won't host them. And then, But that's not the case for other streamers. Other streamers will look for someone to host. And the reason why is because it's how you get your name out and then maybe that person will host you and da-da-da-da-da. To me, I take my hosts really seriously to me, that's like an unofficial endorsement. When I host someone, I'm throwing you, you, in their chat and basically saying, hey, guys, watch this. If that's some whack shit or something embarrassing or something stupid, I don't want to be hosting that. I'm kind of putting my seal or my or my endorsement on that. So I don't use this as like a, a testing ground or or as like a, hey, Jirani, thank you so much for the, thank you so much for the, 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 the resub. <laughs> You're fantastic. But I, I, to me, that's like, I don't know. I probably take it more seriously than it is. I probably take it more seriously than it is. Because I don't want to feel, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, let me give this person or this content my endorsement. Go watch them. Go, you know, throw viewers and money at them. And then, like, not know anything, but just, just look at somebody as numbers and be like, well, hopefully they'll host me back. Cause I, I don't think that that's a, I think that that's a really shitty way to do things, but that's not the industry standard people in this. I've gotten hosts and raids from people who have no idea who I am, have no idea what my content is and they will raid me. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's cause it's that whole networking thing. And then 10 minutes in, like it, there's, it's awkward or there's a clash, you know? Um, and I've had the most common thing that happens after I get raided by a total stranger is people will say like, oh, why are you, why are you so angry? And I'm like, I'm not. This is, this is, but it's because they've come from a streamer. That's like, oh my gosh. Hey guys, how's it going? How are you? Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh, Papa Murph. How's it going? You guys are so fantastic. And then they come to my stream 
And they're like, you know, someone's like, can you say my name? I'm like, no, bitch, you don't pay me to fucking say your name. This isn't a daycare. And they're just like. Why are you so angry? I'm not. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to fucking read your name out loud on stream. I'm not a fucking performing monkey. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Like, but why are you so angry? I'm not. This is my personality. But it's because I've been hosted by somebody that literally knew nothing about me. You know what I mean? Like... You, if, if these awkward situations would be avoided if people didn't host complete strangers in an attempt to network, you know, like it, it, this entire thing would be avoided if people just hosted people that they kind of like they've seen their channel before. Or they have an inkling of the kind of content they create. And that way, when they host that person, they know within reasonable, you know, I guess, margin of error that most of the people in their community will probably melt here. And it's. It's it's just weird because other people don't take their hosts that seriously. You know, I've said no. I, I There's a team that used to like me and now they don't. And literally it's because I straight up was like, there's members on your team that I just can't be on a team with. And they're like, why? I'm like, because I clown that type of shit. And so like, I can't be affiliated with them. Like, I don't hate them. I don't dislike them. But like, I hope you realize like, I make fun of that. Do you know, do you, like, my audience isn't going to take me seriously if I laugh and make fun of just dance streamers and then I'm on a team with a just dance streamer. Like, I, you know, like, I can't sit here and mock and make fun of body paint streamers and then be on a team with body paint streamers and host them. Like, I was like, do you realize, like, my word means something? So, like, for my audience, like, I will be a fucking joke if I'm like, oh, let me be. And they're like, well, wh what's your problem with so-and-so? I don't have a problem, dude. I'm just letting you know this is like a person. This is like a brand thing. This is my brand we're talking about. And if I were to be like, oh, that bronze girl is now on a team with this person. I want you to realize my audience is going to be like, what the fuck? I was like, not to mention the drama because I'm going to continue to clown that shit and continue to make fun of it. And then that streamer that I'm now on a team with is going to notice and be upset and start shit with me. So it's just better if I'm not on your team. And like their responses were like, that's really, a, that's really disappointing. We were really looking forward to having you. Like if you could just put this aside and I'm like, put what aside? My brand, my values, like what change my content? Like what makes you think you provide enough value to me? No, but I'm honest about these things. I don't lie when someone's like, oh, so you're not going to be on your team? No, because you have like streamers on your team that don't mesh with my brand. And it very quickly becomes like, oh, you're stuck up. You're an asshole. You're this, you're that. And it's like, no, I just, there's, I care about, like, I, I care about my word and I can't sit here and like, you know, make certain content that, that, you know, and then have that attached to what I think is crappy content. And sit here and say, oh, you should still support me. And I feel like my audience is intelligent enough. Y'all would pick up on how whack that is. That's the downside of having an intelligent audience. I mean, some of y'all are dumbasses, but that's still the downside of having like an audience that's like more, you know, I don't know, socially aware, whatever you want to call it, or just like intellectually tuned in when you stream is that. And I'm not saying like, oh, that, that's bad. Or I mean, what I'm saying is like, I very clearly have a brand and a vibe. And so I'm not saying, oh, those streamers need to be sent to the gallows. They, they need to be killed. I'm just saying, like, for me to attach my brand to something that I, can, I make fun of or I mock a lot or I parody because I parody that shit all the time. That's, that's very disingenuous. Does that make sense? And for the record, I don't hate those people. I've met several people that do that stuff and I'm very friendly with them because I can separate also people from their content. I'm the type of person that's like, you're a great human being. You're awesome. But I, I would never watch your channel. I would rather shove toothpicks underneath my nails. And some people can't handle that. And I'm like, I think it's because I don't attach my, 
I don't attach my self worth or my value as a person to this. I'm I'm very hard on myself as well. So there's times where I'm like, man, I G or I GM something or I'd made something, and I'm like, I'm you know that was bad. Like I didn't do a good job. But I come from a family where like criticism is something that's like encouraged and accepted and criticism is life. So if you know, I've had I've had base say things to me like, oh, man, your your energy was off today. You should, probably should have called it early and things like that. And I don't sit here and say like, wow, based. I can't believe you said it's just like, nah, you're probably right. But I that's just like that's that's who I am as a person. Like I'm very much in I, I can I can say that I had a shitty stream and, and to kind of separate that from from like I'm not a shitty person just because I had a shitty stream. Or, you know, I'm not a I'm not bad at life just because I didn't you know, this content wasn't good. I'm very capable of, you know, compartmentalizing that other people aren't. Um, but there's times where I've met people. I'm like really awesome person, really great, but would never watch their fucking stream or their stream is boring as shit. I probably would be nicer if I were to say that to them. Like, oh, yeah, no, you're awesome. I've, I'm going to be honest. Don't watch your stream a whole lot. It's just not for me. Don't really like the games you play. Like, I, you know, or, you know, it's it's a little too high energy for me. It's like too much energy that early in the morning. I could see myself saying that. I probably wouldn't be like, man, your stream is dog shit. But I, because I'm a nice person. But I probably would be very honest and be like, I don't watch your channel because I, I don't watch NBA 2K. There's very few streamers I watch. Sequisha is probably one of the few. Uh, it, Sequisha and Day9, I think. I still watch Day9. Day, but Day9 was the first channel I ever, like, like I, even before I had a Twitch account. I would just go to twitch.tv slash Day9TV and without an account and just sit there and watch. So um, there's very few streamers I actually watch. Squish is one of them. I love that dude. Dude has like a, a unique. That's why I talk about like variety casting, but like having a wheelhouse. You know, like there's like I like that Sequisha, although he switches games up, has like a very clear identity. Like when you go to his channel, you kind of know what you're going to get. You get a reasonable approximation. And I try to aim for that with this channel. I really do. I try to aim for that with this channel. Um, I try to have a reasonable, like when you come here, you have a reasonable idea of how the stream is going to go. There's going to be a talk show portion while I put on my eyeliner. There's going to be like, you know, like I, I want people to know that like, and in any given week, have an idea of how like, like, oh, what's going to happen? Oh, well, Bronze is playing Minecraft all week this week. Or Bronze decided to ride the Warframe train because Warframe is popular. Or Bronze decided to jump on Fallout 76. That's all we're going to... Like, to a certain extent, even if you have zero interest in whatever games I'm playing, you have a reasonable idea of what my stream is going to be like. And you have a reasonable idea of, like, like I have certain shows that I always do. Like Melon and a Melodrama. Like Bagged and Boarded. And... I think that some people have this really awesome like formula or it's something that works for them and understanding like, oh, my audience watches PUBG. I wonder if I could get them to watch Escape from Tarkov. I can. And Escape from Tarkov is popping right now. Okay, I wonder if I can pull this audience over to this other game. I think that that is like a really like the ability to clue in on what your chat wants, on what your audience wants, and then being able to... um make that work for what the, the kind of content you want to create is like the, probably the most important skill, but people get too caught up in all this other shit. They get too caught up in oh, what are my business cards look like? I need to spend $800 on overlays and animated, you know, shit on my screen. I need animated sub alerts and this, they get caught up in all this other stuff and they're not creators. They're just entertainers. And to be, I think to actually like survive in this industry, you need to be a creator, but you also have some huge streamers who aren't creators. They're just entertainers. So that's probably why people think that that's the standard. But I think if you look at, a lot of people who've just like I'm talking about longevity. Like just I'm talking about like people that have been doing this for years and are still doing it and make their living off of it. It really does come down to like, are you a creator? And do you have an idea of what you want that content to look like? Then, you know. Yeah.
because I think that I think that too often people are left like chasing the dragon, waiting for that one game that is going to help them explode or that one game that's going to like put them on the map. And so they're so focused on like all this other stuff rather than on like, what do you want to come out of all of this? Which is why you see people that used to have 300 viewers like years ago. And now they're at like 50 or 20 and it's because they don't even have a clear idea of what they enjoy or why they're doing it. They just have this ran this random concept of I'm going to have X number of viewers and <clears throat> they can't make it work. I know people who have gotten partnered off of one game. I know people that they spend their entire time trying to get on the front page consistently. I don't. I, I don't think I've, I've, I don't think I've ever emailed my partner rep and asked for front page. Does that exposure help? Sure. Sure. Does exposure in general help? Yeah, sure. But it's it's just it's not my focus. I in a if I if I run out of things to do, then I might I might at some point do it. But my focus is so much more on like what shows I want to produce and what I want to bring to my channel and what I want my you know, what I want that content to look like and what I want that quality to look like. I don't have time to sit here worrying about being on front page all the time. I don't have time to sit here in other streamers' chats trying to make a name for myself and trying to get them to notice me so that they'll host me. I just don't have time for all of that. I, I'm very, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm like Kevin Smith said, like there's, there's people that create and there's other people that want to take a piece of that. And I'm very much like, if this was, my, my friend said this about me once, my very good friend Adam um, said this to me years before I was ever a content creator he said, you're like a lioness among hyenas. Like you just want to make something and everybody else just wants to take a piece of it. So, and this was years ago. This is before I ever started streaming. This was like eight years ago. He told me that. And I have taken it like no other statement about me that has been stated has ever been more true that I have felt that I do feel like a lioness among hyenas, you know, um, because I'm I'm trying to hunt and trying to like make something and it feels like other people just want a piece of it. And I think that's why I'm so away. I'm so away from other people because um, I'm not focused on I'm not focused on on getting a piece of what this person has or riding that wave. or Oh, man, that 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 looks good over there. I'm very much like this is this is my gazelle and I'm I'm hunting this gazelle and nothing else matters. This gazelle, this, it's me and this gazelle. And other people are more focused on, but what about that amazing water buffalo carcass over there? How do I get a piece of that? And to me, it's like, no. I'm not worried about somebody else's water buffalo carcass. I'm not worried about opportunities other people have. I'm worried about me hunting down this gazelle. What are you going to do after you get the gazelle? Eat another one. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I just, that's how I, that's how I handle it. So... I love your analogies. I mean, it's not really my analogy. It's my buddy Adams because he always described me that way. Because um, I had a lot of friends who were hyenas, and he was like, "You need to find you need to find a pride of of lions because right now you're hanging out with a bunch of hyenas." But my buddy Adam is like, he's fantastic. It's like has a master's degree in fucking political science and theology or something. He's just like really cool and awesome. And I love him. All right. I got to bounce because I have an RPG to do. Um, but you can watch it if you want. I play D&D &D 5th edition on Jesse Cox's channel every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, you're all fantastic. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And have a great day. I will be live later on today. So we love you. <laughs> but I remember, Jesse, I'm totally on time. I'm totally on time today. Um, so I'm going to host them. And then after that, I'll probably be online again in the afternoon. So, yeah. You guys got me in like a deep conversation. It's not my fault. It's totally like deep conversations about fucking hyenas and shit.